Now we look at the other type of line integral that we have. So if we scroll back up to where we introduced the two kinds of line integrals that we have, we had an integral of a scalar field with respect to arc length s. So we've just dealt with those two dimensions and three dimensional cases. And then part b was integrating a vector field with respect to a space curve. And this comes back to our motivating example up above in terms of the work done by a force field on a particle. So now we're going to come back to this kind of integration. So we're going to let F, capital F, be a continuous vector field defined on a smooth curve C. And we're going to assume that C is given by a vector valued function, so some parameterization, R of T. Then the definition of the line integral of the vector field along the curve is given by, and I'm going to highlight the main definition, and then everything else is just different shorthand ways of writing it. And this was the definition, I shouldn't say the definition, this was the integral we came up with when we were looking at finding the work done by the force field of that particle moving, moving along an arch of a cycloid. So it was the value of the vector field at the point on the curve dotted with the direction vector or the tangent vector to the curve at that point and then we integrate along all of those. Now one shorthand way to write that is the expression on the left. This is f dot dr. dr is just a shorthand for r prime of t dt. On the left or on the right there's a, another shorthand way to write this and what's happening here is we are just replacing that r prime of t dt with a unit tangent vector t ds. Where that's coming from is the following. The definition of the unit tangent vector is just r prime over the magnitude of r prime. But if we think about what the magnitude of r prime is, we could write that as ds dt. And then what I could do is I could rewrite this expression by bringing the ds to the other side and keeping the dt on the right hand side. And so I get that r prime dt is equivalent to the unit tangent vector ds. So that's all that's happened here was r prime dt was rewritten as the unit tangent vector ds. Again these are just all notational changes, they are not going to affect the way we compute this. The integral that I've put in the box is how we compute these integrals. It's the vector field evaluated at the parameterization dotted with the tangent vector for that parameterization dt. But these are all diff just different ways you can see them expressed. Continuing this line of different ways to express it, if our vector field is written in this way, so we're given the components for the vector field, uh, the first function or the x component is given by a function p, the next one is given by a function q, and so on, the z component is given by a function r, and the curve is given by this expression r of t, then what we get is that r prime of t is dx dt, dy, dt, dz, dt. And so if I use these expressions in this equation up here for this integral, then I'm taking the dot product of f with r prime of t. So if I do that dot product, I'll just jot it down here. If I do the dot product of f with, I was going to, well, with dr, which is the shorthand, I might as well write it this way which is the shorthand for r prime dt, and f is given by p q r, and r prime is given by dx dt dy dt dz dt, and then we've got a dt hanging on the end, then this dot product becomes p dx dt plus q dy dt plus r dz dt with a dt hanging around the other outside 
And if we imagine that we can just multiply the dt through and cancel it, then this a shorthand notation for this would be pdx plus qdy plus r dz. And that's all that's written here. It's just another shorthand notation for that integral. But it, again, it's that main integral here. This is the one we are setting up, and this is how we are going to compute it. So let's have a look at some examples. We want to determine the work done by a force field. The force field there is given in moving a particle along the twisted cubic. So we've also got our parameterization for our curve. So we've got R of t is given by t, t squared, t cubed. We can even work out what our prime of t is because we're going to need that. That is 1, 2t, 3t squared. We want to find the integral of, and this will be the work, so we might as well say work is equal to f dot dr. Again, that's just our shorthand to get the ball rolling. It's Sometimes it's easier to remember this and then unpack it. Okay, so what is that? That is our vector field evaluated at the points on the curve dotted with the tangent vector to the point on the curve dt, where t ranges from 0 to 1. So we are integrating from 0 to 1. f at r of t. So I've got my f up at the top of the page. So I will just jot that down. f is, the first component is x, y. And x is given by t and y is given by t squared in terms of the parameterization. So this becomes t times t squared or t cubed. The next component is yz. So that's a t squared times t cubed or a t to the fifth. And the next component is xz, which is a t times t cubed or t to the fourth. And that's dot 1, 2t, 3t squared, dt. And so there we've, we've set up the integral, we've used our parameterization to rewrite everything in terms of t, and now we're just staring at a integral of one variable, a calculus 2 integral. You can see there's still a dot product left to compute, but the idea is that once we do this dot product, all we get is a polynomial. It'd be 0 to 1 of t cubed plus 2t to the 6th plus 3t to the 6th. That's dt. And so there's the integral of the polynomial we have to do. In this case, it would be 1 quarter plus 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. Or in other words, it's 1 quarter plus 5 sevenths. Common denominator would be 28. And so that would be 7 plus 20 or 27 28ths. And so there is the value of the work involved in having this force field move a particle along this cubic curve. Let's have a look at another example. So in this case we want to evaluate this integral where c is the line segment from negative 5, 3 to 0, 2. So that is along that first curve. Maybe I'll even put a little c sub 1 here because that's what part a is asking about. Part B is asking us about the same line integral, but instead now we're integrating along an arc of a parabola. So that would be C2. Now, when we look at this question, we don't see a vector field anywhere, or at least maybe not at first glance. But the idea is to notice that what's being used here is the shorthand notation for the integral. So this tells me that I can read off what the vector field is. This integral is the dot product of y squared x with dx dy. And again, that was shorthand for the integral of y squared x dot dx dt dy dt dt. 
And so now I can read off, there is our vector field we're interested in. And this is just our prime of t. So that's whatever the parameterization is we're using, we've got to put our prime of t in there. So that's one of the things we get immediately from this, is that our vector field is y squared x. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the calculations required. So for part A, we want to go along the line segment. That's along the curve C1. That means I'm going to have to have a parameterization for that. So maybe I'll call that R1 of t. But that's a line segment. It starts at negative 5, 3. Uh -oh. And I've got to end at 0, 2. So what I can do is I can just take it to be negative 5, 3 plus t times the vector that goes from negative 5, 3 to 0, 2. And that vector there is going to be the difference in the tip minus the tail. So 0 minus negative 5, or 5, and 2 minus minus 3 is 5. So there's our vector, 5, 5. And that tells me then that x is, as a function of t, x is negative 5 plus 5t, and y is 3 plus 5t. So what is our corresponding integral along curve c1? Well, that's going to be, I'll write it out in sort of the general form as in using the shorthand notation that's given in the question, but this is now going to be evaluated as, oh, and I forgot to tell you, t is going to range from 0 all the way out to 1 to trace out that line segment. So we go from 0 to 1. Our function value f, or our, our vector field f, evaluated at the curve. So that's y squared, so that's a 3 plus 5t, all squared. And then we've got x, which is negative 5 plus 5t, dotted with r prime of t, that's 5, 5, dt. And so this becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of 5 times 3 plus 5t all squared plus 5 times negative 5 plus 5t dt. And so that's just a polynomial. We can expand it out, write it as something t squared plus something times t plus a constant. The point is, is that we've done the new stuff. Now we're back at an integration of a quadratic polynomial. And this works out to have a value of negative 5, 6. Now let's go ahead and do the next one. So this is integrating along the curve C2. So for C2, we're going to have to come up with a parameterization of that. So we'll call that R2 of t. Now it is the parabola, x equals 4 minus y squared. That tells me that if I know the y value, I get the x value as 4 minus the y value squared. So in the parameterization, if I take t to give me the y value, then the x value would be 4 minus that squared. And in order to get the whole curve traced out, t is just going to range over what the y values are supposed to be, and so that's from negative 3 to 2. So there's our parameterization. What we'll need from it, for example, are, well, x of t, that's 4 minus t squared. We'll need y of t, that's t. We'll need dx dt, which is negative 2t, dy dt is equal to 1. And so now we can go ahead and compute our integral. Integral over c2 of y squared dx plus x dy. That's the integral from negative 3 to 2. Our vector field, which is y squared x. So y squared, that's t squared. x is 4 minus t squared. And then we're dotting that with the vector made up of dx dt, dy dt, dt. And so there is the integral we need to calculate. In this case, again, it's a dot product which will give us a polynomial, so we're integrating a polynomial. 
this is negative 2 cubed, t cubed, sorry, uh, plus 4 minus t squared dt. And if we go ahead and calculate this value out, we get a value of 40 plus 5 sixths. And so one thing to note here is that even though we were integrating our vector field over a curve that had, or two curves, that had the same initial point and the same end point, the values ended up being different. So what that means is the line integral in the end not only depended on the initial and ending points, but it also depended on the path you took. So it was path dependent. It turns out that the vector fields that this does not happen for, so in other words, the vector fields that are path independent, if I integrate it along C1 and I integrate it along C2, those vector fields that I get the same value for are actually important for us. Those are the things we're going to explore in later sections. And it turns out that we actually know the kinds of vector fields that will have that property. In fact, these are the conservative vector fields. Conservative vector fields, so vector fields that are the gradients of some potential function, end up having this path independence property. That if I integrate it from the point negative 5, negative 3 to 0, 2 of a conservative vector field, I'll get the same answer no matter what curve I take going from the starting point to the terminal point. Those are the things we're going to investigate starting in the next section, 16.3. Alright, so that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.